Okay, we have the live stream up and running, it would appear. I'll just check the volume levels. So yeah, I'm sounding okay. And the airplane's sounding okay. And the background sound's sounding okay. So let's go into the aircraft, get rid of the catering truck, get rid of the fuel truck, get rid of... Actually, we'll leave the jet bridge on for the moment. We'll do that as part of the, the start-up routine of the airplane. <coughs> Excuse me. So, just moving things around on the desk. How do we get the Airbus up and running? Actually, before we do anything, let's go and pull the the flight plan in from Simbrief into the tablet. So there's the data from Simbrief, KBOS to KLGA, LaGuardia. Uh, we're going to be doing the uh, runway 31 expressway approach just for a bit of fun. Uh, it should be entertaining, if nothing else. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, let's go into fuel and let's get the fuel from Simbrief and fill the airplane up as required. Is that correct? Defueling. Can we do this on instant? Right, we only need a tiny amount of fuel because this is a, a short trip. And obviously this plane can fly about seven and a half thousand miles and we're going to ask it to fly a couple of hundred. Um, payload. So let's go and simulate getting it from... We'll do this in instantly. So we get it from Simbrief. Boarding we, completed. We go and fetch all the passengers in one go, which should be nice and easy. So then, overhead we're going to turn the batteries on. Do we have external power? Yes, we do. And strobes go to auto. Nav and logo goes to two. APU master switch goes to on. On behalf of myself, your captain, the first officer and cabin crew, I'd like to take this time to welcome you aboard our so flight. How loud is that for we'll you? Okay, that's loud enough. That's good. Front here and waiting to see final numbers from the ground crew, then we'll be on our way. Uh, I didn't mean to pull that up. Coming through the cabin shortly with a very important safety briefing. We do ask that you give them your full undivided attention as they review the safety operations of this Airbus aircraft. Um, we do appreciate your business. So that's the APU is starting up. I'm just trying to catch up with where I am on my own checklist. Crew supply. Emergency exit lights to armed. No smoking sign to auto. Adias goes to nav. And then in the cockpit, we'll go and brighten some of these screens up, shall we? So, we've got this one. They're all in slightly different places in the 330, aren't they? So this is the updated copy of the... Hello, it looks like we've got a graphical anomaly here with the lights lighting up through the skin of the aircraft. But anyway, we're not going to worry too much about that. What is causing that, by the way? Oh, it's the um, ground power truck. OK, that's fine. Have we got APU yet? Because we can get rid of ground power as soon as we've got APU. Let's go and have a look. Yeah, we've got the APU. So if we go and get rid of external power, We'll be using APU now. So then we can go back down to the tablet and ask the ground power truck to go away. Okay, so we'll also remove the jet bridge while we're at it. So hopefully you see that move away from the aeroplane. If we look at that from outside. Yep, there it goes. Very cool. Ah, uh, brum 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 brum. What do we do next? Now we need to brighten up the engineering screens for a start. That'll be really useful. Uh, the MCDUs could do with being a, quite a bit brighter as well. Okay, we're getting there slowly. How about the FGCP? Make it a little bit brighter, hey? So then, Control 5 takes us down to the FGCP, so in we go. 
and we clear out the message about primary and we go into init and we do an init request and it should go and fetch it from Simri for us. There it comes. Uplink insert in progress. Flight plan uplink. So clear out the messages. Uh, go and fetch the wind. So they would be good. Come on. Is it broken? Should have fetched us the wind and it hasn't done it. Interesting. I wonder if it's broken at the moment. Uh, let's have a look in the RS initialization, that's worked. Let's go just try that once more. Oh, it's come in there, it's just going slow, that's all. Wind data uplink has happened, we'll clear out the message for that. Uh, flight plan. Boss, we're going to let's go and have a look at the uh, the flight plan here. So we're taking off runway three three left from Kbos, so departure, and we want three three left, and we're going to be doing the BLZZR six standard instrument departure, and we'll insert that. So are we doing a transition? Unless it says BLZZR, then no, it's just going to be straightforward and then coming into KLGA we're going to do the no it's the X version isn't it for 3.1 there it is um, what start are we doing so there's the it's not it's not doing a start so insert that we're doing our own waypoints basically, so we'll probably have a discontinuity down here to get rid of. So after the SID going into the, the route, there's a discontinuity, we can just clear that out. And then coming down here, I'm fully expecting to see... Oh, no, it all, it all matches up, that's nice. Very good. Okay, let's go and look in performance. And we haven't... Done. Let me just check. So, flaps, we're going to use flaps 2 for takeoff. We're not going to bother with flex temp, that should give us enough. Did I not do the, the weights? Maybe I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> that would explain that then. Uh, fill that in. Go to fuel planning. Block confirm. Uh, then back into performance, and then we should get the data to do the numbers. There we go. Okay, next phase. Oh, it's saying initialize weights CG. Did I not do that as well? In it. Next. Cost index is in. Looks okay to me. Zero fuel weight, so the center of gravity is in there. So maybe that was just a notification, maybe not so much a um when you know before we had filled it in, it's just warning us. Uh so Petrescu is saying hello, where can I buy this airplane? It's free. Um you download the Headwind installer. If you go and search on Google for Headwind and Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's an open source aircraft. It's worth saying, it's gigantic, so you can see, compared to a lot of the other Airbuses, this can do the transatlantic routes. Um, ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum, where have we got to? So we've got the fuel done, we've done the performance data, so then we go up to the MCP. Actually, before we do that, let's just go and put that on the flight plan page. Okay, so then MCP is control and two, or it should be, yes it is. So, We'll press B to calibrate the barometric pressure. You can just see the altimeters moving over there. And we are going to go and set our cruise altitude. Let's go and have a quick look at our... Yeah, so 30,000 feet. We're going up to 30,000. Managed mode. Managed mode across the board. This is an Airbus after all. 
Okay. So, let's get ready to get the aeroplane up and running. Let's put the seatbelt sign on. And external power is already off, which is good. And we're going to do the pushback, essentially. So, shift and... Actually, we can do it with the tablet, can't we? We don't have to use shift and P. So we can do pushback in here. We engage the pushback system. Confirm it. Call the tug. You can see the tug there is moving around. Coming into the aeroplane. So it will suddenly snap into place when it's in the right place. That's keys, that's your stream that's buffering, not mine, I'm afraid. Or it could be YouTube himself having problems. Okay, so the truck has connected. So we can go back slowly. And we can go and put the APU bleed on. We can go and turn the ignition on. And then start engine number two. And you can see the N3 is coming up. That's interesting. We'll also put the flaps to take off position now. So which way do we actually want to go out of here then? So we're taking off 33 left, so it would... Although it doesn't really matter here, we just want to go right, I guess. Or we could reverse in. So if we go left with the tail... Okay, that engine's up and running. So then we'll start the second engine. Or engine number one. And it comes up. we put the beacon light on? No, we didn't. Is that missing off my checklist? Flight attendants, arm doors, and cross-check. I haven't put the pumps on, have I? Idiot. I've completely missed, misread the instructions here. So we should get some engines now. So they're busy spinning around doing nothing. That's what happens when I start looking at the, um, the live stream comments and answering people. It completely distracts me. And right. So you can stop moving. Detach the tug. Turn the system off. We should see the tug pull away from us. Leave the parking brake on for a moment. Yeah, the engines are coming up now. I did this the other week when I started answering comments and f completely forgot the pumps. Exactly the same point. I think it's because, you know, while you're being pushed back, you've got a moment or two to look around. <laughs> it's not the first time. So the ignition can come off now. Uh, the APU bleed can come off. The APU can come off. Crossfeed happens automatically on the Airbus. So, flaps are already at takeoff position. The now I can never remember where this switch is to arm the nose wheel steering. Is it in the same place on the 330, or is it down here? There it is. Nose wheel steering is on. Put the predictive wind shear on? Is it going to allow it to work? Oh, the sim's frozen, that's why. It's having an absolute fit, isn't it? 
There we go. So, should we put head tracking on there? So we need to... Now look at that. It's a good job I'm checking things. The controls have gone haywire. I'm going to have to pull the USB plugs yet again. Ever since the last sim update, it's been a complete and utter lottery if the controls work. Look at that. So now everything's working. It's bizarre, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to turn head tracking off while I sort this out. So, predictive wind shear is on. We should have spoilers that now work. We should have a flap lever that now works. Brilliant. Okay. And release the parking brake and we can taxi. So the taxi light goes to on. Open the throttles gently. I'm not sure how much power we need to get moving. Okay, are the throttles actually no. Unbelievable. So let's go with that again. This will take longer to start. This is because of that control problem. So I've essentially killed the aeroplane. Oh well, at least you get to see how to fix it. So we won't get power back on the screens for a moment. I guess we could ask for them to run over with the truck, couldn't we? Which we can probably do. Let's have a look. This is all caused by that USB problem. I'm going to turn off the head tracking while I do this, otherwise it's just going to wind me up. So we should have ground power available again. No, we don't, even though it's plugged in. That's a bug in the aeroplane then. So we have to wait for the screens to come back. Something's happening. Unfortunately, you can't see the ecam screen until it boots up. Come on, put the APU back on, you silly thing. There we go. So that was all caused by a USB controller failure that the sim has had a nightmare with since the last major update to the sim. I don't know why. And it basically threw all of the controls in all directions and killed everything on the aeroplane. So do we still have engines? We still have engines. Well, we did until I pulled them. So we are losing the engines. I'm going to turn the ignition back on. Yeah, we're going to have to go right back to basics. So ignition off, engines off. I think this is a really good way of testing the aeroplane, to be honest, isn't it? So um, we need to go and put the APU bleed back on. I wonder if it's lost the route out of the... No, it hasn't, look. So even though it completely powered down, it hasn't lost the route. That's interesting. I wonder what killed it. Because the engines were running, therefore... It should have been using them for electricity. So... Let's go again. Nope, it's not having it. I think it's actually broken the aeroplane. Whatever happened... Of course it could be a bug in the aeroplane. What we've just seen. Let's try that again. 
Right, it seems to be working now. Maybe I just had to recycle all the switches. But I, I've been plagued by this since the last major update to the simulator. Every time I'm in the middle of a flight, sometimes the sim will appear to freeze and then all of the controls will throw in all directions. It'll only happen for like a tenth of a second, but depending on the aeroplane it can completely wreck the aeroplane. I'm not the only person, I've had numerous people email me about it saying do I know a way of stopping it, and no, no I don't. Okay, engine number one, here we go again. Hopefully we'll get on our way this time. Now have any of the switches thrown? So strobes are still on auto, beacon is on, Avon logo is on too, nose is on taxi, that's all good. Seatbelts are on, no smoking's on auto. So otherwise we're looking okay. So TCAS is on standby, but it should be until we get to the runway. So auto brake, go on to max. Okay, so ignition off. Because the engine's up and running now, okay. Let's see if it behaves. APU bleed off, APU master switch off. I appear to have no right throttle now. This is just getting better, isn't it? <laughs> it switched the profile as well. When that glitch happened, this was on 3.30 earlier. It's just jumped across about 20... Well, it's picked one at random by the look of it. Have I gone past the 3.30 or is it actually gone? Oh my word. Don't say it's actually gone. Okay, we'll go for the fly-by wire. It looks like it's gone. There was a fly. There was a um, a three thirty profile here, and it's not here. And now look, it's randomly selecting them when I'm trying to scroll through them. That was an A three hundred. We just went past. So let's start with that. and see where the tents are. I'm going to put the parking brake on momentarily. That looks correct. You'd expect it to match, to be honest, because this is based on the fly-by-wire programming. Okay, so parking brake off. And we now have throttles that are working, or appear to be working, and we have nose wheel steering. So I'm having to double check everything now. Nothing if not eventful today. So we're going to go and carry on straight down that taxiway all the way across the airport basically. I'm going to get a move on now. Just shows the sim bugs happen to the best of us. That was just the strangest thing I think I've ever seen. Well, you actually, you never know with flight sim, do you? You never know quite what you're going to see.
So something happened with the controls. The 330 profile has gone. I'll show you how to make a new profile in a moment based on the 320 profile. And uh, I don't know if it happened at the same time, but the, um, yeah, suddenly the cockpit just died. While the engines are running, which is bizarre because they generate electricity and the electricity uh, cross feed in the, the 330 is automatic. This is the very latest build of the 330 Neo, the 941 I think it is. So it might be that there are some bugs in it for all I know, but we're certainly going to find out, aren't we? So it's the Headwind A30, A330 Neo. So landing lights can go to on, strobes can go to on, those can go to take off, and we'll line up. Flaps are in takeoff position, we've just got the TCAS to do. Please prepare for takeoff. It's a bit late saying that. I guess normally you would do the um, TCAS on the taxiway, which would trigger that sound. <laughs> it's quite amusing, isn't it, when it does that? Okay, so you can see the route out ahead of us. We've still got 30,000 programmed in, we've still got um, managed mode selected everywhere. Flight directors are on. Gear up. Let's just make sure the gear switch is working. I'm going to be double checking everything, aren't I? Enjoy the scenery. Just make sure everything is still on. Yes, it's still on. Get to see Boston as we depart. So we should turn left any moment. Famous last words. Okay, not very, not a very big left turn. Should have a look my side. So, someone's asking how I get the nose wheel steering to work on this aeroplane. There's a switch. Right, it was on, by the way, by default. There's a switch just there. Anti-skid and nose wheel steering. But it should be on. OK, 
Okay, now we can see behind us. We see Boston. So we're climbing out on a managed climb to 30,000 feet. Let's increase the range. So we're not going to be at altitude for very long, to be honest. It's a lovely clear day, though. There is some cloud in the distance, so it's not flight simulator messing up the weather as well. Or we would hope not. So, just reading that comment about the ground handling of the big planes, none of the big planes should turn much unless you're going at walking pace, because they weigh over a hundred tonnes, and fully laden they could be a couple of hundred tonnes. So you imagine the stress on the undercarriage legs if you tried to turn rapidly. So we're just coming up through 10,000 feet right about now. So landing lights come off. It's interesting we only have one landing light switch in this. We'll put these strobes to auto. Steep belt sign can stay on until we get to cruise altitude. To be honest, there's hardly any point letting people sit down. <laughs> So this is in the US, so 18,000 feet for the transition altitude. So we'll pull the barometric pressure knob when we get to 18,000. We're just coming up through 11. And you can see KLGA is already out there. Look. Is this actually going to get to cruise altitude? According to this, it thinks it will. It's going to get to 34 in about 40 miles time. Or 30,000, sorry, in, in 40 miles time. Okay. And then we do this circular routine and do the um, <coughs> the expressway route into New York. Yeah, the texturing, I've just looked reading the live stream comments, the, the colouring does seem to be different, doesn't it? Again, whether that's accurate, I wouldn't know. It's a shame that none of these aircraft have the binnacle compass working. The, it works in the Phoenix. You should be able to pull this down, and it comes down and pulls the compass with it. In a magnetic compass. Okay. So we've got about a thousand feet to go and then we'll switch to standard barometric pressure. Because we were so light at takeoff, it took off like an absolute dragster. So obviously this thing is probably running at about a quarter of its normal weight. Or its you know its payload. Like it, like we said when we got in, if you go and look at the fuel. We've got hardly any fuel in on board. What did we have in terms of payload? About half full of passengers. Uh, not too much cargo. Okay. OK, 
Okay, so we can go for standard barometric pressure name. Should have a look from outside. It's a monster, isn't it? So yeah, this thing has a range of about seven and a half thousand miles. So NEO stands for New Engine Option, if you weren't aware. Is the cabin modelled? It is, but I think it's got clipping that will stop us walking through. Oh, we might have to go and unlock it, saying that. Uh, unlock. He says, famous last words. Can we walk through it? Oh, we can just walk through. OK, I'm thinking of a different aeroplane. <laughs> Oh no, it doesn't have it modelled. Okay, but it does have the... You can see now, look, it has the cargo bay modelled. Interesting. So the bits that you can see through the doorways, basically, are modelled. That's funny, isn't it? The, the tricks of the 3D artist only draw what can be seen. How am I moving around? I'm using the cursor keys. So I can float around like Casper the Ghost. And I've got head tracking, so I can look around freely. Unfortunately, head tracking doesn't work well with tiny click spots. So rather than just leaning into them like you're blind as a bat, I tend to turn the head tracking off when I need to be clicking lots of things. So, I don't know, we're going to get to 30,000 feet, you know. Maybe we will. I think that estimate on the flight plan might be a little bit optimistic. Although I suppose we've only got 4,000 feet to go. So should we get let people at least have a couple of minutes to go to the toilet before we come back down again? So seatbelt signs over here. It's so clear. I don't think I've seen it this clear over the US in a long time. No doubt you, New York won't be quite so clear. It never is for some reason. Well, not whenever I visit. So let's go and have a little look at the route. So flying with a pretty wicked crosswind, a 120 knot crosswind. Flying down towards New York, we're going to fly over the top of Long Island and then around the bay, come back in and fly the Arnav expressway approach, which we do visually essentially. Um, the expressway runs along here so these, this is really just a guide. 
you're looking for some water towers and I've, I've done this on the channel before it's a famous approach there's lots of videos of it of real pilots doing it on YouTube you follow the expressway you go around the back of there's a water fountain here you go around the back of the water fountain there's a stadium city field here you go around the back of the stadium you're descending all the time so you're looking to be at 2500 feet here and then dropping down to a thousand feet by the time you go around the back of the water fountain and then continue descending basically smoothly until you rotate onto runway 31 so you're just skimming the buildings by the time you get to here sounds like it's time to sell some rubbish to the passengers I just use the cursor keys on my keyboard, I've mapped them. Um, I can use forwards and backwards. I think by default, forwards and backwards will go up and down, uh, which I use Alt for. Um, so I've remapped for the, the up and down cursor keys to do what Alt up and down used to do and then reversed it. So yeah, Alt up and down, then move me up and down. Obviously F puts you back in the pilot's seat and then head tracking will take over. Is there anything we need to deal with? Everything's dark. So the rule of thumb in an Airbus typically is if a button is dark, it's good. Buttons that are lit up are typically things you need to deal with. Look at the track we're flying to combat that 120 knot crosswind. So let's just, out of interest, go and have a look at the Meta at LaGuardia. 300 degrees, 10 knots, so it's going to be straight down our face coming into the wrong way. Gusting though to 21 knots, so we'll see how we go. We're big and heavy, so we should be able to stabilise much of the turbulence, but we can always go around if we don't make it. You just fly back out over the bay and come back in on the same route again. I'm using the arrow keys on a normal, is it 102 key keyboard? 104 key keyboard? I forget what the number is these days. So the keys in between the keypad and the keyboard. You can always map the keys. You just need to be careful because a lot of the keys are already mapped. Okay, how are we doing in terms of the route? 40 miles until top of descent. So when we come back down, let's go and have a look in little nav map. So we want to be ascent, yeah, 3,000 feet at Pachu. So we'll target 3,000 feet for our descent. But we won't do it until we get to top of descent. I wonder what caused the, the failure of power on the taxiway. It must have been the controllers glitching. Did something. I've had it a few times recently where it's caused trouble. But usually once I'm up and running, I don't get controller glitches. It just does it once typically within a flight. Okay, let's go and find out what the QNH was on the ground at LaGuardia. Uh, 2988. Have we got this set for using inches? Yes, we have. Yeah. A little bit of cloud around the New York area, but not too much. It's 
see it starting to appear on the radar here at 80 miles out, or navigation display I should say. Yeah, so we'll be flying that approach manually over the last few miles. We won't be using autopilot. The expressway approach, I, I don't see how you could use autopilot to be honest. The aeroplane would fall behind too much. These windscreens need a clean, don't they? I wonder if it projects the green banana onto the navigation display to show the estimated point at which you're going to reach your target altitude. So let's just try this. We'll come down a little bit early on purpose. So we've gone managed mode, told it to come down to 10,000 feet a little bit early. At least then we get a sight of this, the um, city as well actually. We're down a little bit lower earlier. So if we were to increase the range on this, is it showing? No it's not is it? As we have noticed, we have begun our initial descent down to our destination. Now would be a good time to wrap up any business you need to take care of as we prepare for our purge. If you are up, once you return to your seat, we ask that you remain seated until the aircraft arrives safely at the gate. Flight attendants, please return to cap for a ride. Okay, seatbelt sign is back on. Let's see how quickly this will descend. It's only coming down at the moment at a thousand feet a minute, which is a bit odd. I may expedite that enormously. Although it may be because it doesn't have to, because it's only a managed mode. It's just doing like a, a level change descent profile. We could ask it to expedite it. Let's see what happens. So what descent rate can it do? It's interesting that it's not hitting the target speed. It's cruising much lower than the speed. Yeah, that's looking a bit better, like... Let's have a look on the map, see where we are. Actually, if we show, this is pretty good these days, look, at showing the descent rates, so obviously we're expediting, but we're going to level out at 10,000. 
and then manage the rest of the descent as we come in around the bay. But I thought it might be nice to be lower in the bay. If we turn off expedite, because we get that vector shown to us in little nav map, let's see how much the vector changes. interesting isn't it? So at the point where it needs to descend it will probably start descending more steeply just using manage mode because remember we came down early so it's not descending as steeply as it could though at the moment look it's trying to manage speed again so once we clicked expedite it allowed a faster descent rate that's interesting and now it's got to the target speed you can see the nose suddenly drop again it's coming down actually quite quickly now look 2500 feet a minute so yeah look it's doing it it's coming down as it can it's coming down faster so let's zoom in a little bit more I wonder, so we're just coming down to 18,000 feet, what was the barometric pressure we said? Shut the radio up. Of course, I don't know which radio that was that was picking up the ATIS. But, um, it seems like we've solved it. a monster isn't it? it really is Okay, so we're going to get a tour of the bay. Fly out, around the outside of the bay, back in, and then do the expressway. Just looking for the sun angle to see why it's reflecting so strongly in the water. I think it's just luck at the moment. So obviously as we turn around we'll lose that reflection. So 10,000 feet. Holding altitude holders kicked in for 10,000. 
So our next target will be to come down for uh, Pachu, which is 3,000 feet. But we won't need to do that for some time. So we're just making our way around the bay. So if we look out of the side window, can we see JFK down there somewhere? Probably just a bit too far away to see it. Obviously there's Manhattan over there, somewhere. Oh no, sorry, Manhattan's further back, isn't it? Of course it is. Um, it's going to be over there, isn't it? Should we put some dome lighting on in case we get blinded a little bit by the sun? Shouldn't take too long now. So this should, oh, we're already at 250 knots, that's good. So it can start the descent straight away down to 5,000. In fact, if it's going to do that so slowly, let's go for 3,000 straight away. So we're below 10,000 feet now, so landing lights come back on. We'll 
put these on ahead of time. They won't switch on until the gear comes down, but it should be fine. We'll make sure the strobes are fixed on. So we should be able to shorten this up now to 20 miles range. Surprised it's coming down so gently. I guess it knows looking at the legs when it needs to get to 3000 by, which is just past Nancy, but just before Pachu. So it's judging the descent. I don't know if you can see that on the um, MCDU. It always fascinates me trying to figure out what the kind of guiding parameters are with planes like this. Just centering the view up there, sorry about that. Let's have a look on the map. So we should be just approaching the land here. So I don't know this part of the US very well at all, south of New York. Trenton, New Brunswick. Yeah, my, I'm afraid my Geography isn't quite what it should be. Obviously, Philadelphia is down there towards the southwest. How are we doing? 8,300 feet and slowly but slowly descending. of ships down there. It's a coaster, I think, isn't it? It's making its way along. Okay, we're now turning towards the turn over the bay, so we'll be flying out that way and then turning in over the city. So, just coming down through did this actually take the command for 3,000? It did, didn't it? Yes, it's got it marked as the target. That's good. So, just out of interest, I don't think... Oh, it does have IRS, so we'll go and program it in even though... Oh, it actually is an Airbus, isn't it? 108.5316. Let's just double check that then. So if we go into the Navra page, it hasn't got it. Interesting. Oh, it's because it's RNAV, isn't it? So it's asking for destination data. We've got plenty of time. So let's go and do that. So initialization. Uh, that's in performance, isn't it? Sorry. Uh, next phase. QNH at the destination we already know is 2989. Temperature. Now, did we look that up? I don't think we did. Does it give us it here? Not easily. Right click, show information. Temperature, 15 degrees centigrade. Wind is 31313. Uh, Barrow is for the um, decision altitude. We don't need to worry about that. Um, I forgot what we actually came in here for before we saw that. 
oh the ILS so navrad so we're probably not going to need it to be honest but we can program it in at least so 108.5 316 degrees what, I wonder if it will let us do it How do we get the slope? We don't. We, we really don't need the slope. And to be honest, it's only as a visual indication anyway. So we're coming down to six thousand eight hundred feet. We want to get down to three though. Should we expedite it? So I don't want to have a mad scramble to get to the correct altitude. Okay, there's the city. So you can see we're essentially lining up with the runway that's facing us. So if you look at this from a distance, we're lining up as if we were going to come in on runway 04, but then when we get to the towers, we turn off, the water towers are about here, we turn off along the expressway. We don't follow this plan, this is just a visual guide. We fly along the expressway, losing altitude and speed, and then turn in for 3-1. So it's a visual approach. So let's come down to 2,500 feet. So it's got the airspeed, why is it not descending? If it doesn't, we may have to take matters into our own hands. So there are the two towers, okay, I'm going to go manual. So let's take it down to 2500 feet and lose some more speed and get ready to start deploying flaps. 2,500. So there we go, we're just below 2,500 feet on the altimeter. And we're losing some speed so we can start deploying flaps. So, these are the two water towers. You make your right turn, so you stay lined up with the runway. You're at 25 and going low, look. Let's get the nose back up. We're losing more height than we want to. Let's just pull it back up to 2,500. Uh, should we have a quick look at the city while we're here? Looks amazing, doesn't it? Right, sorry. So we're back up to 2,500 feet. So there's the towers, and if you look out to the right, you'll see the expressway stretch away from us in a moment when we get to the towers. So that's where we make our right turn. Okay, so right turn now. There's the expressway. We start dropping. Okay, we can't go that slow just yet. So let's put some spoilers in. Get down, give us more drag.
we still can't go for the flaps just yet. I keep forgetting this is big and heavy and takes a while to slow down. So we're looking for the water fountain. So we're down to 1300 feet, we're still coming down. There we go, we can go for the next stage of flaps now. So we're looking to be, we're a little bit high. 1,000. Around the back of the water fountain, and if you look over here, you can see the, the runway look. Around the back of City Field. turned a little bit too tightly. Again, it's one of those things you have to practice really, to do it well. Full reverse. Come off the reverse, let's go for the brakes. And lift the spoilers, lift the flaps. High speed exit. Although it's not such a high speed exit now that we've slowed down so much. So yeah, we just turned a little bit too tightly. It's an amazing looking airport, isn't it? The new development here. So this is the Orbex version of um, the Guardia. Should we just pull into straight into one of these parking areas directly here? Looks amazing, doesn't it? Actually, before we get too close to any buildings, let's go and turn some lights off, hey? Okay, parking brake on. Now, can we get this to work this time? So, if we go for services and ground power unit, please. If we can't, yeah, we can get it this time. Look, external power, so we don't have to use the APU to switch over when we can bring the engines offline. So, engines, oops, so we have to do this on the switches, don't we? So, engines can come off. That should be good. supply can go off. We can go and ask for the jetway, which is over here, or jet bridge I should say. And here it comes. 
and we can go and let the passengers take their seatbelt signs off or let them take their seatbelts off I should say very good so obviously then you can just run through everything you did earlier on backwards to go and set the airplane up ready for the next crew to come on board and fly it I think it always amazes me at the the big airports is how quick the turnaround is on the aeroplanes is literally sometimes it's only 20 minutes so one crew will um, disembark the cockpit and another crew will get straight on behind them or maybe there'll be some hoovers will quickly run round but they'll be straight in with their um, operational flight plan configuring the aeroplane immediately it always amazes me Okay, so we can essentially just go and turn off the power now. I guess in the real world they don't go as far as disconnecting ground power because it stays on ready for the next crew to jump on board, take over the aeroplane and go on their way. So how is New York looking in the sunset? Looks pretty amazing, doesn't it? Very good. What's he doing with those stairs? Idiot. He's going to crash into that now. <laughs> it's a nice looking aeroplane, isn't it? It's huge as well. Absolutely massive. Right, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, sorry about the bug at the start that killed power to the aeroplane. I'll have to do another flight with it soon and see if we can recreate that or if it was just a one-off. It was really odd. We just started taxiing. We were under our own power and we lost everything. The controls glitched and then everything went dead. And we, Although it hadn't gone completely dead. Because when power came back, we still had the, the flight plan programmed. So it wasn't like a total power loss where you would lose everything. It was just the screens went very odd. It may have been a bug for all I know. I'm not sure. Anyway, see you again soon. Take care.